Hey there, friends. A little bit of a rant from me today regarding things that I just can't wrap my head around. First of all, go check out the guys who made this awesome shirt. Let's call it the F the ATF Hidden Message t-shirt from my friend Stymie Clothing Company over there. You'll notice if you grab this shirt by the fake nipples on the side over here and raise it up, it has a secret message for you. So you walk around church or wherever and you're not going to see that because it's going to look like that. But it does have a hidden message and it definitely coincides with my famous discount code FTATF. So what you want to do is go over to stymieclothing.com. Check it out over there. It's a $30 t-shirt. Comes in coyote brown heather. I really like this look. You can get it in several sizes and wear it to the next cookout and people will get a nice little laugh out of it. Again, go to stymieclothing.com and you'll see the F the ATF hidden message t-shirt right there on the front page. Guys, many of you know how I feel about 4473s and background checks. I feel like it's a flawed system. It does not work. It does not. There's always the claim that it keeps bad people from getting guns, but that's actually proven false all the time. In fact, honest law-abiding Americans who should be passing this goofy little system that has been devised over the years get held back and prevented from buying firearms. And I, you kind of wonder if that's not done on purpose but it's done often. So there's tons of errors that continuously happen with this system. What does happen? The criminals continue to buy their guns because guess what? They don't use a background check system. <laughs> they actually sell their stolen guns to each other. So I have a real problem with the whole system to begin with. It's an unconstitutional system. It's not right. It's not effective and it doesn't work. It's just a massive speed bump and sometimes a huge deterrent for people to get firearms. However, Hunter Biden lied on his background check. Hunter Biden went to court as a result of this. Personally, I do feel that Hunter Biden and his crew should appeal this, and certainly I think they should win it because it would be a massive rippling effect that would happen across the entire system as far as proving that the background checks are unconstitutional. So I don't wish any good things on Hunter Biden, but I certainly would like to see something positive happen regarding the background, background checks. And if it happens to include him, fine, like the Rahimi thing. Everybody knew that Rahimi was a piece of garbage, but Rahimi was actually going to the Supreme Court with a case that would have benefited Second Amendment owners, so or Second Amendment advocates and Second Amendment people, gun owners. So in the Hunter Biden case, the same thing could happen. It could benefit us, even though he's a piece of garbage. However, in typical Democrat fashion, they are not wanting to take any responsibility for their own actions. In fact, there are other Democrats that are coming out in defense of Hunter Biden, even though as a addicted crackhead who should not have been purchasing a firearm based on the law, he still broke the law and he's actually a convicted felon. Yes, that did happen. But they're still coming out in his defense, even though he did something involving a firearm and saying it wasn't his fault, but it was the company who sold the gun to him. It was their fault. USA Today claims in a recent story that if a Delaware gun shop had, quote, done its job in 2018, Hunter Biden would never have been able to illegally purchase a 38 Special Colt Cobra revolver, which led to his three felony convictions. Quote, by law, handguns can be sold by shops only to state residents who must provide a government-issued proof of residency, and Biden was not a legal resident of Delaware in 2018. Instead, he offered only a passport with his name and birthday. Now, this was the same allegations that were first brought up in court by Hunter Biden's defense team, but the judge said that the gun shop was not on trial. Hunter Biden was. Now, the USA Today reporter never mentions that federal law requires the firearm purchaser to present valid identification and to be truthful on the ATF Form 4473, which Hunter Biden certainly was not. He concealed his drug addiction when asked, quote, are you an unlawful user of or addicted to marijuana or any depressant, stimulant, narcotic drug, or any other controlled substance? At the time, Hunter Biden was smoking crack cocaine nearly every 15 minutes. The point here is accountability. Even when proven with three felonies that somebody is wrong in their own system, right? Even though all the proof is there, the proof has been provided, the court system processed all of this and found that the person was guilty of it. They still, even though proven wrong, say it wasn't my fault. Somebody else could have done something to prevent me <laughs> from committing a felony. 
you understand what they're saying here? The USA Today paper reporter is saying that, which who reads papers and who reads the USA Today anyway? But nevertheless, their claim is that even though Hunter Biden set out to commit a felony because he knew what he was doing and he knew what he was doing was illegal. He was smoking crack every 15 minutes and he answered the question on the 4473. So he knew what he was doing. But you have a Democrat saying that even though this guy knew that he was committing three felonies, it's not his fault. If somebody else would have done something different, my client, even though he was attempting to commit a felony, would have been prevented from committing a felony. Do you understand what that is? So they're saying that two wrongs were done here. Hunter Biden purposely and consciously trying to commit a felony and a gun shop. So both of them were wrong, according to what they're saying, right? I don't know enough of the detail about the gun shop, and I don't know what was presented to them as far as a form of ID. So I can't speak on that behalf. But let's just assume that this accusation is right. Hunter Biden was trying to commit a felony. The gun shop, let's say they needed to have a photo ID in Delaware and did not receive that. And let's call that being something that was wrong. So this guy is responsible for Hunter Biden getting off on his three felonies for a clerical thing? That sounds really, really familiar coming from the Democrat Party. Another clerical error, and you want to shut everything down. That's kind of like what the Biden administration has instructed the ATF to do, to go find clerical errors with the FFLs and shut them down based on that. Not because they're, quote, trafficking guns, because they did not cross a T or dot an I. They got a number wrong. They got a letter wrong. They didn't put the serial number down correctly. That's what they're attempting to do, use clerical errors. Remember, that's the same reason that Trump went to trial, where because of clerical error with Stormy Daniels, the whole debacle there. So they're, they're really big on passing the buck to somebody else. Hey, even though I was trying to commit my felony, you could have stopped me and you didn't, so it's your fault that I committed the felony. This is a resounding theme among Democrats and more specifically liberal Democrats. Now, I know a lot of you get upset when we talk about political parties. Although both parties do a really horrible job of looking out for our Second Amendment rights and our constitutional rights in general across the board, there still is a difference between the two parties. Yes, is it kind of a uniparty? Yes, it is. But let me explain to you kind of the difference. If you, now this is old school here because nobody reads newspapers anymore, but if you had a newspaper route back in the day and you went down this one street and there were two really bad dogs on that street, one of them just chased you. One of them chased you and tried to bite you. Which one would you prefer? Just the one that chases you? Because the one that chases you is not trying to bite you. He's just chasing you. The one that's trying to bite you, would you prefer that one? Would you consider those equal? That's how I look at politicians. Most politicians are scumbags. But there is a difference, and there are a few sprinkled out in there that kind of do want to do the same, the, the right thing. Let's take the Freedom Caucus in Congress, for instance. There's a couple of guys in there that truly stand out as far as fighting for our constitutional rights, and more specifically, the Second Amendment. They do this on a regular basis. Now, are they the same kind of guys that go drink whiskey and smoke cigars with all the hardcore Democrats that are trying to take those same rights away from us? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it could be. I don't see it. I don't have proof of that. But my point is, I don't see any of these Democrats, any of them, not one, even talk about the importance of the Second Amendment. If you look at the Second Amendment, you have 100% of the Democrats that try to take our Second Amendment rights from us, and you have a percentage of the Republicans who also do the same. Do you follow what I'm saying? Every Democrat is trying to take your rights away. Not every Republican is trying to take your rights away. Going back to the Hunter Biden issue, the lack of accountability. This is a theme, a resounding theme in the Democrat Party. That is a sickness. This is a true epidemic. No accountability. These people can afford unlimited internet. They can afford the latest smartphone. They can afford 80 inch TVs, brand new cars, lotto tickets, getting their hair and their nails did on a regular basis. Oh, but I need you, the taxpayer, the guy who's working, to pay for my health care, my groceries, my housing, my student loans. They prioritize things based on what they want and they expect us to pay for what they need. 
They never, ever want to take accountability for that. It's always somebody else's fault that this has happened to me. Too fat, I got a disease. Smoke a lot, the man got me hooked on cigarettes. Crackhead, another disease. Not my fault, I'm addicted to them. Always late, oh, it's just a plethora of excuses. Traffic, my car wouldn't start, had a flat tire. How many times do you have that one person that works for you that's always late, but everybody else manages to show up on time. But it's always somebody else's fault that that one person is always late or always misses work. And I know a lot of you have probably seen this one. You got a person in your family or a friend or something like that who's kind of had a, has a crappy life, right? Choices. Let's remember choices. They live in a dump, drive a piece of crap car. Wife probably left them. The next wife left them and the next wife left them. Oh, poor me. I got bad luck. But somebody else in the family is successful and they talk about them all the time. They talk about how that person is lucky, right? I know, I know you guys have experienced that. Even coworkers, oh, you're just lucky. I got a promotion. Ah, it's because you're lucky. Really? <laughs> really? Luck? That's what you think it is. Just like these people who live in squalor and don't have anything to show for anything and will die broke with nothing and probably lonely, Hunter Biden made choices in his life. Hunter Biden has things because of who his dad is. He's played off of that exposure of I'm a Biden his entire life. In fact, he probably got by in that gun shop by saying, I'm the president's son. It may have been an issue that he did not have a Delaware ID, but because I'm the president's son, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Guarantee you that was mentioned in that gun shop when he bought that pistol. That's a resounding theme amongst the Democrat party. You see it everywhere. You see it all over the place. It's not my fault. Somebody else is the reason why I'm in this position. So instead of me making a better choice, I need somebody else to improve my quality of life because it's not my fault that I live in a shit box and I don't have a good life. It's always somebody else's fault. There may be scumbags on both sides of the aisle, but there is a very, very resounding theme on the left and it lacks accountability across the board. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.